Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we are going to discuss about the heat budget of Earth. That is the amount of heat received by Earth and the amount of heat that is released by Earth. So we know that the heat that is received by Earth is mainly from Sun. The Sun emits this solar radiation in all directions. So very small fraction of the total energy released by the Sun reaches our Earth which we can see over here. So this amount of radiation of sun that reaches earth is called insulation which is an acronym which is a loose acronym for incoming solar radiation. So now let's evaluate the heat budget of earth by calculating with reference to the thermopause. So all the solar radiation that we receive on this thermopause we will consider it as 100%. So this is all the amount of solar radiation received by earth and any radiation that is released by earth and it crosses thermopause so we will consider it the amount of energy released by earth to the space so here we can see that we receive solar radiation in the form of short wave radiation and when it crosses the thermopause and comes into the atmosphere it first encounters cloud so as we can see in this image there is whole lot of cloud in our earth this cloud acts as a barrier to light the light which hits it a large part of this light is reflected back to the space. So a very large fraction of light that is coming from the solar radiation will never reach the surface of earth but it is reflected back by the clouds. So if you see the figure 27 percent of the total solar radiation received by earth is reflected by clouds. So we will mark it as 27 percent over here. This much amount of energy is released back to space by earth because of these clouds. Now moving forward, the rest of the radiation that is not reflected by the clouds, it comes to the lower atmosphere. And almost 14% of the incoming solar radiation is absorbed by ozone, oxygen and vapor. If we see this spectrum, here we have incoming solar radiation and here we have outgoing thermal radiation. So now we are talking about incoming solar radiation. So we see that the incoming solar radiation is absorbed by water vapor. Very less amount is absorbed by carbon dioxide. Then here we can see oxygen and ozone. They can absorb a significant portion of incoming solar radiation. In fact, there is really scattering of the incoming solar radiation. So this region shows the amount of incoming solar radiation absorbed by various gases. There are certain other gases too which absorb the incoming solar radiation. This is around 14%. So this much amount of solar radiation does not reach the earth's surface but it is absorbed by the atmosphere itself. Now the rest of the solar radiation which moves further in the atmosphere which encounters the dust particles or aerosol particles. Now this dust particles when the solar radiation hits it, it causes scattering. So almost 23% of the radiation which comes from the sun it encounters scattering by these dust particles. So there are basically two types of scattering, relic scattering and my scattering. The relic scattering is caused by small particles and it scatters the light in all directions. And this is wavelength dependent, so blue color is scattered most. So here we can see that in almost in all directions the light is scattered. The my scattering it is caused by larger particles and here we can see that in the forward direction there is much more scattering compared to in the sideward or backward direction. So overall if we see then out of this total scattering we will see that 6% of this scattered incoming radiation is directed outwards. So this much amount is lost directly to the space without reaching the earth or absorbing by the atmosphere. So this is directly emitted back to the space. Rest 17% of the total scattered solar radiation is directed towards earth and it is absorbed by earth. So here we are receiving it by scattering or diffused light. The rest of the radiation which reaches the earth, so 2% of that radiation is again reflected by the ground. So our earth also reflects some of the solar radiation. There are regions where there is water or there are regions where there is ice. So it will reflect this radiation directly back to the space. So we can see that 2% of the incoming solar radiation is directly reflected back. Rest of the radiation 
is directly absorbed by our earth. Now remember this radiation which directly reaches our earth and is absorbed by the earth, it increases the temperature of the earth. The earth gets heated up. Now because of this, the region which is close to the earth also gets heated. The air around here gets heated. And we know that when the air gets heated, it moves in the upward direction. It cools down over here. And then it again flows back and gets heated. So this circle continues, which is called convection and turbulence. Now, this air is moving from the ground and it is reaching the upper atmosphere. So this is not released to the space, but it is absorbed by the atmosphere. The atmosphere over here is heated. So this 9% is lost by the earth, while this 9% is gained by the atmosphere. Next we see that water vapor, it rises from the surface of the earth and reaches the upper atmosphere. And here the latent heat of the water vapor is released to the atmosphere. So here evaporation of vapor occurs, while here condensation of water vapor occurs. Here we see clouds are formed by the moisture which is created by evaporation of the water over here. So what is this latent heat and what is this release of latent heat? Remember here that 19% of this latent heat released by this water vapor is absorbed by the atmosphere. Now to understand what is latent heat of vaporization, let's see this video. Here we can see that we are applying heat to this water, but the temperature does not increase. Only the state is changed from liquid to vapor. So this much amount of heat is given to it without increasing the temperature of this water. Now similar thing occurs when the water is cooled down. When it cools down, we will see that this much amount of heat is released by the moisture but it does not reduce the temperature of the moisture. So this is called latent heat of vaporization where this much amount of heat is supplied to the water when it is evaporated. So on the ground, the water is evaporated and it absorbs this much amount of heat, which is the latent heat of vaporization. When this vapor reaches the upper atmosphere, it cools down, it condenses to form clouds or rain droplets. So during that process, it will again release this much amount of heat in the upper atmosphere. So this is how the heat is transferred from the earth to the upper atmosphere by vapor. To further understand it, let's see this example. Here there is moisture. Now this moisture is rising up. The moisture in this is converted into clouds. So because it is converted into clouds, it is releasing this latent heat of vaporization which it has absorbed on the earth. So when it is releasing it over here, it is giving that heat to the atmosphere therefore it is heating the atmosphere now the earth which has absorbed this much amount of heat directly from the solar radiation and indirectly from the solar radiation it will release it back to the atmosphere as well to the space so this is released in the form of long wave radiation 23 percent of this total insulation which is received by the earth is released back so some of this long wave radiation is absorbed by atmosphere that is 6% of it is absorbed by the atmosphere and rest of it it directly goes to the space that is 17% of it goes to the space so now we can see that some of this radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere we have previously seen this diagram where we have seen that the incoming solar radiation was absorbed by several gas gases but now we are talking about the outgoing thermal radiation and here we can see that these gases they absorb the outgoing solar radiation, water vapor, carbon dioxide, oxygen and uh, ozone, methane, nitrous oxide, they all absorb in different proportions the outgoing solar radiation. This is also the cause of greenhouse gas. So the atmosphere will absorb the outgoing radiation. Now if we look over here, then this much amount of solar radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere directly from the incoming solar radiation or indirectly via these processes is absorbed by the atmosphere. That is 48% if we sum all of these. So this much amount of solar radiation is absorbed in the atmosphere and the atmosphere will slowly release it back to the space. Now if we perform a calculation, we will see that the total amount of incoming solar radiation is equal to the total amount of the outgoing radiation. So the heat budget is maintained. If you see over here, then total amount of heat absorbed by earth 
will be equal to the total amount of heat released by the earth. So the total heat budget is maintained throughout this process. Now why is this heat budget important? Suppose if the heat emitted by earth is greater than the heat received by earth, that is the amount of heat released to the space is more than the amount of heat obtained from sun. So if that is there, then earth will continuously lose heat. And over a long period, earth will become cold and icy like Mars. Similarly, if heat emitted by earth is less than the heat received by earth, that is the outgoing radiation is less than the incoming radiation, that is we are preserving, we are storing some radiation, then earth will continuously accumulate it. And over a long period, earth will become hot like Venus. So you can see that why this heat budget is important. Now let's see the heat distribution across earth. The heat received by different parts of the earth is not equal because of the spherical shape and the inclined nature of our earth's rotation. We know that more radiation is received in the equatorial region while as we go towards the pole, the amount of radiation received decreases. And if you see the amount of radiation released back to the space, we can see that um, less amount of radiation is released compared to what is absorbed at the equatorial region and in the polar regions you will see that the amount of radiation given to the space is more than the amount of radiation absorbed from the atmosphere or, or absorbed from the sun. So we can clearly see that there exists an energy surplus because we are receiving more radiation, we are giving out less radiation. Well, here there is an energy deficit because we are releasing more radiation and absorbing less radiation. So this deficit and this surplus is maintained by the wind flows as well as the ocean currents. They will mix the air throughout the earth. They will mix the water of oceans, thus transferring the heat from the uh, equatorial region towards the polar region. Here we can see that these are the winds which are, uh, which are this mixing this air. They are moving the air, then there is this ocean currents. So they are moving the equatorial, hot equatorial water towards the polar region, thus taking heat from this equatorial region towards the polar region. So this is how the heat is distributed across the earth by the wind as well as the ocean currents. I hope you liked our video on heat budget and it was helpful to you. If you have liked our video then you can subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. If you have any doubts feel free to ask in the comments and if you like what we are doing then you can support us using the UPI ID given over here. Thanks for watching the video.